one that found that K was a trigger, and cold for me is like partially a trigger. Um, but again, it's unique to everyone. So that all makes sense. So, genetics. There were two, two main ones that I found, and one was called interleukin-13, or IL-13, and those are just two common alleles for it. Really, it's not, they don't act that differently, but they both um, make, they both make it produce way more IL-13 than you would normally have. And IL-13 is responsible for triggering T cells and inflammation and hyper-responsiveness, so it's actually, it's also with allergies, uh, it's a big factor. And the reason that I actually bothered to put the two separate ones up is because you can actually, you can get both of them at the same time. That's really what makes the risk factor, is when you have those two at the same time. And they just make you, it produces way more, and it's really a hassle. And usually if you have that, you're also going to have other allergies. Like other people who are allergic to every kind of food probably have a problem with this. And it's just a note, I'm not going to talk about it, because for the purposes of asthma, they're pretty much the same. But IL-4, just make a note of that, that that's also a factor. But for the purposes of this, they essentially do the same regarding asthma. So I didn't bother to put that as a separate so just make a quick note on your IL-13 that IL-4 is also a common one, so I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. And then the Librin, or FLG, um, that's actually proteins in your skin, that's what kind of keeps your skin moist, elastic, firm. Um, what will happen is that there's, there's two mutations, and the names are just as complex and aren't going to make any sense as the others, so just note that there's two of them. And what they do is they stop the production of filigrin after the first repeat in DNA, so you get much less than you would normally have. And the, it's not that that directly causes asthma, but it can cause a condition called eczema, and that can make cracks in your skin, and it can dry out your skin, and you can get blisters, and it's, it's no fun. But there's a type of eczema that you can get called atopic dermatitis, and it's just AD for short. And if you have that, because of the one of the two alleles, your data the you know, risk factor for asthma. The reason, I mean, the only difference with atopic dermatitis is it's more of like a flaky skin. Does that make sense? Um, 
which is another thing that deals with muscle constriction, it's a neurotransmitter, and that also deals with the muscle constriction, and so it prevents that from working. And I'll just talk about the breaths really quick. When you get the medication, it usually comes with like a little packet. Pass this out. But in it, it had a couple of graphs and it talked about FEV. And I thought that would be important. And so this was the FEV, the change in FEV um, from the moment they had it um, onward for hours, we go up to six hours. But you can see it peaks at about an hour. And right away, uh, the placebo, it doesn't really change much at all. Like that's pretty close to zero, that's right at zero when it starts, it goes up a little bit, and that's just the placebo effect. And then, but these two, they're both just types of albuterol, and you can see it goes up, but then it peaks after about four hours, that's four to six hours is enough to raise these work. So I'll test this out. Sure. 